What's up guys, this is Steve for Android at Night, and today we've got for you is my top 10 root apps for Android, so enjoy. Now there are a bunch of different screen recording apps on the Play Store, and a lot of them don't require root, but all of the best ones tend to. There are a couple of new ones for the new Lollipop APIs. If you're using an older device, then you want to root and use something like SCR Screen Recorder. It automatically detects which device you're using and adjusts the settings to fit. And then when you start the app, you get this little floating bar. You tap on it and it'll start to record both your screen and your device's audio. Now the free version works for up to three minutes and then the paid version will work for as long as you've got space for on your SD card. And then to stop recording, you can simply tap into the notification bar and you can see it saves at the bottom as an MP4 file. Next up we have Adblock Plus, which does exactly what you'd expect it to do. It just blocks applications um, sending ads, so either in the apps or in the Chrome browser. It's got a cool setting which allows non-intrusive ads, so it means apps that actually use little banner ads and things like that will still show. It'll just block things like big pop-ups um, and the more intrusive, more irritating ones. Next up we've got Root Explorer, and while it isn't the prettiest file managing app in the world, it handles the root files very, very well. So it allows you to go down to a root level and mess around with files on your SD card, so you can go around and mess the application files, things like that. It's also got some really nice settings as far as how it handles zip files, so if you want to unzip things, um, Root Explorer will generally be able to do that for you, where a lot of other file explorers will fail. And when you tap on a file, you've got a huge host of options, ranging from all the normal ones you'd expect to find. You can also check out the um, file's permissions, um, add a bookmark to it, you can zip it, you can change it into a different file format, things like that. So it's a very powerful file manager. If you're messing around with apps and stuff like that on your SD card, um, I can't recommend this more. Next up, we have Titanium Backup, and again, this isn't the prettiest backup app on the Play Store, but it is one of the most powerful and one of the most fully featured if you're rooted. You can set schedule, so you can set this to do this automatically, say, at Sunday at midnight, so all of this will be done for you, you don't have to think about it. It backs up all the applications as well as all the app data. It's also got the option to sync to Google Drive, which means all your applications and all your data are always going to be saved in the cloud. Next up we have Device Control, and this is one of the apps that's almost sort of too fully featured. It does a huge amount of different things. So at the top here you can see, you can see your device information, and this gives you um, much more detail than you'd normally find just checking on your phone. You can jump across here, and for example you can see um, the exact details of all the sensors um, within your device. So if you need to be getting huge amounts of detail, this app can do that for you. You've also got a couple of customization options. You can change how the color calibration works um, across applications as far as theme the status bar goes, although generally in Lollipop, um, that's not really an issue anymore. You can also change the vibration strength of vibration feedback, and it also plugs into your kernel. So if your kernel's got entropy, for example, it'll let you play around with that. You've then got some very detailed device performance. It goes into CPU temperatures and battery temperatures. You've then also got options to underclock or overclock your CPU. You've also got the options just to use governors, which are kind of like presets, so if you want performance or power save, um, you can change based on uh, what you're doing with your phone. You can also mess around with your file system, you can change how it schedules um, and how quickly it reads ahead. Then you've got a couple of options here which are very device specific and quite sort of nitty. These are going to be if you're really getting into changing the drivers on your phone or if you're using thermal drivers and stuff like that. Um, these will give you some more details as far as those go, but for most people you're probably not going to be messing. Um, messing with these for the majority of the time. At the bottom here you've also got some tools, you've got a tasker kind of setup. This allows you to set stuff up, much like the app tasker, to um, do things when you turn your phone on and off. So I've got it set, when my phone turns off it lets it underclock itself to save battery and then when I turn the phone back on it will um, ping back up so it's very very quick. You've then also got a flasher option which will allow you to um, flash custom recoveries to your device. And then you've also got the options to back up, wipe data and wipe your cache in Dalvik and you can flash zips with the plus button at the bottom. You've then also got an app manager built in and a wireless file manager. Now I don't have this set up, but if you've got a wireless file server, this allows you to access that and access things within it and change them. Next up we've got GMD Immersive Mode. This allows you to use Android's Immersive Mode on apps that don't normally go immersive. So if you turn it on, if you tap in the middle, it gets rid of the navigation bar. And if you tap on the right, it also gets rid of your status bar. And then when you're in that mode, you simply swipe to get um, access back to both bars. You also get a notification in the notification tray and this allows you to save based on the application you're using so you can have it so certain apps will go full screen and certain ones won't. So this is really good for games and watching videos and stuff like that when you just want that little bit of extra screen real estate. Next up we have Exposed Installer and this allows you to install exposed mods which will change pretty much anything you want on your phone 
This used to be really, really important um, as far as sort of theming your phone and customizing it. Now for me, Lollipop looks pretty good, so I don't use these as much. But if you're using an older device, sorry about that guys, my camera ran out of battery, but I've charged it up. So I think I was saying if you're using an older device, then the exposed module is going to be much more useful for you. You go into the, um, the app once you've installed it, go into the modules, and you can see the ones that you've got installed. You can see I haven't got many because, as I said, I've only just started using this again um, on Lollipop. At the moment, I am using the AC display one, that's really good, um, sort of like an ambient kind of thing. I tried to get the ambient display mode working, but it doesn't seem to work, um, and 5.1 doesn't seem to play nicely with a lot of modules, but if you're running an older version of Android, that's not going to be an issue. If you hit download, you get a list of all the different modules you can get, um, and there's obviously a search option at the top as well. If you want to find these, the best way is to search around forums and look at videos, because there's a lot of them. There's an absolute crap ton of these, but um, if you find the really good ones, they're really, really useful. Next up we have ROM Toolbox. This works with a few other different apps, so if you hit ROM Installer here, it'll take you to the ROM Installer app, which allows you to install ROMs for whichever phone you're running. As you can see, they have different um, distros for all the most popular popular versions of Android, so you've got like AOKP, Carbon ROM, Cyanogen Mod, all the good stuff. Within this app, you can also backup and restore, you can flash recovery, and you can make it so your ROM will automatically update. It's a really powerful tool if you're going to be running a custom ROM, if you're going to be running a bunch of different ones and you want to be able to swap between them more quickly. So going back to ROM Toolbox, there's also an app manager which allows you to perform backups. And then you've also got a root browser built in as well. This allows you to do most of the things of the browser I showed you earlier. Um, this is just a slightly more pared down version. You can run scripts, which is similar to Tasker. It allows you to automate different processes, so like Wi-Fi triggers and NFC triggers, um, battery triggers and things like that. Auto Start Manager lets you decide which apps start on boot. So for example, if Skype always starts up in the background, you can kill it with this and it'll give you a little bit more free memory. There's also an Apps to SD option if you've got an SD card still, and you've got a rebooter at the bottom. On the performance screen, you've got CPU control and kernel tweaks. You can also edit your build prop and you've got a task manager built in as well. And then there's also an SD card booster, which makes the read write on the external memory um, a little bit quicker. And then finally, on the interface panel, we've got a font installer. You can mess around with your boot animations. There's also a built-in theme manager, which lets you customize your status bar and its icons. And at the bottom, there is a theme chooser, which cooks into ROMs like Cernage and Mod and allows you to theme the entire experience a little bit more easily. Hope you like that guys, comment below if there's any apps you think I should be using. Go ahead and hit uh -huh. Go ahead and hit the like button if you've enjoyed it. Please also subscribe if you haven't seen it before. You can follow me on all my social media -y things with the links in the description. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.